Somebody asked me on Facebook today if St. Augustine is, has very strict rules for planner, painters, and uh, I've heard that there's some areas, especially public spaces, where they don't allow artists to paint Terra Paniso. I've never had any problems. Uh, I've never had any problems. But I should say that, um, that you're, you're, you know, when you're painting plein air, you're out on the street. So you sort of become a target for, for crazy ones. Some people have thrown stuff at me and Cream and go do a bunch of a uh, bunch of weird things, and uh, especially when I paint at night, I uh, I'm very careful where I set up and and but for the most part, it's it's, it's been okay. For the most part, it's been okay. No. Nothing out of the, nothing crazy lately. Anyway, so this is what I'm gonna be painting. Right there. I'm doing a few changes from for this, this scene. Uh, basically, I'm gonna move this, this tree, I'm gonna move it over this way. I'm gonna have a wall here. You see this white fence here? I'm gonna use it as a wall maybe add more light coming through but most of the stuff i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep this i'm gonna keep these plants i'm gonna make them bigger too so let's see how it goes I want to say that these red sunglasses are a success. I I feel that I've got most of my values correct, and uh, I was struggling with that last time when I was painting at night. It was it was hard to get the right values, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how, how it, why it helps. Take a look at this. I put the sunglasses here. You see how it transformed everything in almost a uh, black and white picture. Two-tone picture. So it brings everything to... Uh, on grayscale mode. Should cut it red scale mode, right? And that helped a lot. That really really helped a lot. So I can see most of my values. Now my I'm I'm doing the trees and the plants I know that I'm gonna be lifting up high so that's why they look so dark so I always layer a color kind of like a reddish color underneath whenever I'm painting plants and bushes and trees and all that so, so that's what I'm doing now Somebody came by and said, oh, that looks very relaxing. I don't know. I mean, it's a, I'm not sure if it's... I, I don't do this for relaxation. Relaxation is not one of my goals. I, 
I, I don't think that my problems, my daily problems and issues don't go away when I paint or they disappear from my mind. I think it's more of a higher purpose. It's more of what I am, what I'm doing with the time that I have been given and how people can benefit from this. What can people learn from this? Appreciate the world, appreciate nature. Because it's, it's, painting is not easy. Painting is not easy. Painting is a struggle and all different angles. I think the mystery is in, in a life of purpose and service rather than avoidance and looking for happiness or relaxation or sticking my hand in the sand and, not, and trying not to see the problems. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna meet my friend Bill. I'm waiting for him. I'm gonna teach a class now at 11. Grab some lunch here. Some really good places. I brought a few uh, paintings to swap for a show that I'm gonna have in Ocala. So I am. And then celebrate my son's birthday. I want to have lunch here. And Godfrey's. Oh, we'll see. This is another street that I'd love to paint. Check this out. Isn't this a great alley? It, the only issue with this is that the light is very consistent. Because the sun comes up from here. And then it sets on this side. There's not much variation in life. A night is great though. A night is great. Oh, here's how we get street. Here's the gallery. This is the uh, final piece. And I want to point out a few things. Uh, especially for people that are beginning um, planner painting. Um, the first one is, um, it's about light and shadow and how important that is on my composition. And I, and I always make sure that I have very strong shadows and, and very strong lights. And, and it's, a, it's a high contrast between both of them. Um, usually objects are either fully lit or in shadow. The areas where they transition from light to shadow are, are very narrow and very small. So when I'm out there and I'm, I'm looking at my subject matter and I'm looking at the street where I want to paint up, I, I, I look at every geometry of, of the piece and I say, is this in light or is this in shadow? And then based on that, I make my decision on what to do and how to compose it. On the bottom, there's the uh, shadow on the street and there's the reflection of the water that is also in shadow. And then there's part of the uh, bushes on the left are with light and then uh, some of the bottom parts are all in shadow. That breaks the painting into uh, interesting areas. And using that information, it, is how I arrange the elements on my composition. Uh, I use these very abstract rhomboid shapes, if you will, 
um, areas of, of shadow or angles, and I use them as leading lines, focal points, uh, negative spaces, um, all of that that will create a, a pleasing composition. So when I'm out there walking, walking around, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that, and I'm, I'm not thinking so much about, oh, that's a pretty scene, right? Oh, that's a nice... That's a nice house. I think about colors, shapes, light, and darkness. And I think that's important when you're starting plein air. Always choose that over a beautiful tree or a beautiful plant or a beautiful flower. Because, yes, it might be uh, beautiful and pleasing to the eye, but it doesn't work as a painting. Uh, And and you, you would encounter that many times. Okay. So that's... That's with composition. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to use the, those uh, red sunglasses is because color mixing and value. And in order to represent it well, I need to see it in black and white. And uh, there's, there's different ways that you can do that. Like, uh, like I know you can take a photo with your phone and then turn it black and white and then you can see. But then... But it's not the same as looking at it with your own eyes. Uh, when when the picture is on your phone, it's reduced. And it's in a small size, and it doesn't it doesn't really uh, translate what you're seeing. I think the best analogy is you can that I can give you is you can hear a song or on your phone with your headphones, and then you can go to a live concert. They're two different things. Now. Let's talk about uh, brushwork. There's some areas that are looser, and there's some areas that I tighten up. Um, I don't put detail in every single part of the image. The uh, uh, the brushwork is more expressive in in the areas where I want to give more emphasis. So you can use that to your advantage. This painting, in particular, it it started becoming a little bit too colorful especially in the background. I think uh, I shouldn't have put that orangey red roof and now that I look at it. Uh, maybe I, I'm going to change that color but because I, I wanted to keep a limited palette. So I'm going to keep it in the pinks and in the reds and the greens. Now, that creates harmony and makes it more cohesive. When I don't like my painting to look like a bag of Skittles. I want it to be harmonious. So limited palettes is very important when you're a beginner painter. Use use less colors. You can achieve a lot with a few colors. Let's talk about simplifying the scene. I omit a lot of details. I I use I pick on certain elements that I think tell the story and I use the light, I use shapes, colors, and I leave out all unnecessary details because it, it is impossible when you're painting plein air in a, in a couple of hours to get everything, everything that you see. And that leads me to personal style. Um, there are some plein air painters that are, work very tight and there's some others that are very loose and they use different medium. So I use the one that I feel more comfortable that helps me communicate what I've tried to say. You will eventually have your own personal style as you keep working and going out and painting. And Don't feel pressured to find your style right away. Some people say that the style will find you. And what is style? It's your own signature. It's, uh, it's what you've learned throughout the years. It, it's... Uh, I, I see it as, as, as your grand prize, a culmination of, of all your hard work and labor throughout the years. You may want to be, or you may want to paint like Sorolla, and maybe that's where you're pointing at, which is fine. It's, it's, it's always good to have a high aim. But in the process, your life and Sorolla's life are very different. So you accept that and say, well, I am not either worse or better than Soroya. I am me, and that's enough. You can learn a lot from the masters. Um, Look at Monet, look at Sargent. 
Look at Sorolla. Look at how they capture light, how they compose, the atmosphere that they, they infuse. All that will help you develop your own voice. Uh, as you analyze all of these paintings and you analyze your own, um, you will find yourself experimenting, doing different things, and you will, in the end, interpret the world in your own way through plein air painting. That's all for now. If you find any value on this video, please subscribe and comment, ask questions. I'll be more than glad to answer all of them. Bye-bye.